Question 19, we're asked to use the trial improvement method to find the solution to the equation where we're given that it lies between 3 and 4. Even though we're given that it's between 3 and 4, we must first try 3 into the equation, which gives us an answer of 21. That's too small because it should be 30 or as close to as possible to 30. Then we try 4. It is too big because it gives us an answer of 56. And then it is literally a matter of trial improvement. I'd use 3.2 because the answer for 3 was 21 and it was only 9 away from the answer we wanted of 30. So I felt that it was quite low a value we should be looking for. So trying 3.2, it gave us 26.368, which was too small. 3.3 was slightly too small, although very close to 30. We must then take the next value to one decimal place, which is 3.4. And it is indeed too big. So that tells us that our answer lies between 3.3 and 3.4. But in order to get the full marks for the question, you must then go to halfway between these two values and find what happens when we substitute in 3.35. And actually when we do that, it is too big an answer. So that tells us that our answer must be somewhere between 3.3 and 3.35. Therefore, to one decimal place, the answer we're looking for is 3.3. Question 20, we're asked to expand the two brackets and then simplify our answer. So taking the first bracket, we get 6y plus 18, because each term inside the bracket is multiplied by 6. Then in the second set of brackets, we have minus 2 times 2y, which gives us minus 4y. And minus 2 times 3 gives us minus 6. We can now collect the terms that are the same. So we have 6y minus 4y to leave 2y. And we've got 18 minus 6. So that's just 12. So the answer is 2y plus 12. In part 2, we're asked to expand and simplify x minus 3 all squared. So that really means x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 3. And one method is to use the grid method, which has already been shown for you here. So we're multiplying x times x to give us x squared. We're multiplying x times minus 3 to get minus 3x. And again, minus 3 times x gives us minus 3x. Then minus 3 times minus 3 gives us 9. So these four terms are our answer. However, we have two that we can simplify. The two minus 3x's become minus 6x when we add them together, and we have plus 9. So our final answer is x squared minus 6x plus 9. In part b, we're asked to find the nth term of the sequence. In order to do this, we must consider the common difference each time. So in order to get the next term, we're adding 6 to the previous term. That tells us that the first part of our nth term is 6n where the 6 is representing the common difference. Then in order to get the next part, we must go backwards and find what we call the zero term. So because we're going the opposite direction, we're taking 6 away. And taking 6 away from 2 gives us minus 4. So that minus 4 goes on the end to give 6n minus 4. In this question, we're given the sale price of the chair to be £52.48. And because there's been this saving of 18%, that means that the chair is worth 82% of its original price. Therefore, we know that £52.48 is equal to 82%. We must find what 100% is. And the easiest way to do that is to initially divide by 82 to find 1%. And if we do that, we get 0.64. Then we're going to multiply by 100 to find what 100% is, finding 64 pounds to be our answer.